Oh, circular music. Should Christians listen to circular music? Let's talk about it. Hey Seeking Fam, this is your boy Clifford Che here. As you all can see by the title of this video, should Christians listen to circular music? Listen, this is a huge topic that a lot of believers um, literally want to know. And I know that because I asked you guys on my social media this week and I asked you guys, what should this week's video be about? And a lot of you guys voted for this one. A lot of you guys want to know. And I said, hey, this is something I could discuss because before I was saved, all I used to all I used to listen to were secular music. And a lot of you guys who know, I used to be a dancer and I used to dance. And so doing that, I had to dance to a lot of circular music. And that's that's what all my life was about. And so before I got saved, it was so challenging after even after I got saved it was so challenging for me because I didn't know what kind of music I could listen to now that I follow Christ. I didn't know if there are Christian songs out there that that I could enjoy and not, that are not necessarily worship or whatever the case may be, right? It, it was a whole lot that I was trying to figure out when it comes to music and the Christian. So I said, you know what? Because by God's grace, I know some stuff. I don't know it all. I'm still growing. I said, I could help you. I could share with you what I use that helped me so that you know, if you if you want, you can use it and it can help you, you know. So, yeah, by the way, I, I'm still sick. I still have allergies. So if I sound a little crazy, pardon me. That is why. A little disclaimer. Cool? Cool. When it comes to circular music, uh, nobody's really telling you that as a Christian, you can't listen to circular music. No, a Christian can. Um, the question is, should you? You can. As a Christian, you can do whatever you want. But just because I can do it, doesn't mean I should do it, right? So circular music is good. Listen, there are music I listen to in the world that were great, that I love them, and I still love them till today. <laughs> I don't know, but listen, there's some songs, the beats, once I hear it, I'm like, hey. But, but the, 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 the emphasis here is this, that just because something is good doesn't mean it's beneficial to you as a Christian. Now, you have a lot of people who may debate this. No, no, I should listen to that. No, no, this is what sets us apart as believers, right? And so it may be good. We're not saying that it's not good, but it may not be beneficial. And how do we know it's not beneficial? We're going to get into that, right? So first, we must understand that whatever we listen to, right, whatever we allow into our ears, right, goes into our heart. So whatever we hear um, um, affects our heart. Whatever we see affects our heart. Whatever we we say or we listen to it affects our heart so when we listen to that it goes into our heart whatever goes into our heart then affects our actions in other words the songs you listen to has the ability to affect your actions your thoughts your mind the way you process things the way you see life right so if if that's the case that we know that the songs we listen to do affect our actions then we then have to ask ourselves the question of okay what is in the songs that I'm listening to? And how can this help me to live the life that Christ expect me to live? Instead of you saying, no, that is worldly music and you shouldn't listen to it. What you should rather focus on is, does this push me to live and look more like Christ? And I think once you look at that area, it helps you to cut a lot of music, you know, outside of your, your life, right? And so for me, I, I, I focus more on my love for Christ and how I want to love Christ and be like him more than trying to figure out, should I do this or no? Christ saves you to be free. He doesn't want to cripple you. It's not, oh, can I touch this? Can I, no, no. It's, if, if, if you don't want to do something, let it be your love for Christ that is leading you to that. Let it be the heart that you have for Christ. Let it be the fact that you want to follow Christ and look like Him that leads you today. It shouldn't be from a, a place of slavery whereby you're scared. No, 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 God has not put a spirit of fear in me and you, right? So, so first understand that. And when you understand that, the next thing that you have to understand 
is a scripture that I probably should read to you in the book of Proverbs chapter 4 verses 23 it says guard your heart above all else for it determines the course of life so like I told you right whatever comes into your ears goes into your heart but then what comes into your heart determines the course of your life determines your actions so I have some some three points or some three questions that I want you to kind of ask yourself to then help you to decide if you should listen to circular music or not and the first thing should the first question should be that you should ask yourself is does it bring glory to god one of the main things we understand that music does is that music in the bible is used to worship god david used music to worship the lord he used music to literally glorify the lord so if, if you want to decide if i should be listening to this song or not what you really should ask yourself is, is does it glorify god does it point me to god or does it point me to to the enemy does it point me to de the devil does it point me to the things of god or does it point me to the things of the enemy and the second thing that you want to ask yourself is, does it edify me, right? And by edification, what I mean by that is godly edification. Because there's, there could be a lot of things that could edify you, but they're not necessarily godly, right? So in a sense, does it, does it, does it speak of love, right? And, and you could say, yes, it does. It speaks of love. There are a lot of circular music that speak of love. But what set us apart, again, what set us apart is not just love, it's not just any kind of music, but the love of Christ. So when you listen to that music, what you have to ask yourself is, this, is it, does this speak of the love of Christ? Not any kind of love, because we understand that there are all kinds of love out there. There's a love of the world that, 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 that may not necessarily be beneficial to us, but does this music speak of the love of Christ, right? And there are a lot of music that, that speak of love, but are not necessarily like the love that God teaches us to follow. So, so the love of sex and money, and before your time and all that stuff, right? You want to really think about that. And you want to really look into that and see, okay, even if it edifies me, if it, if it gives me comfort, right? How is it comforting me? Because a lot of things that comfort you may not be, like, that may not be beneficial for you. Like, like I used to get a lot of comfort <laughs> from, from porn. But does that comfort comes from God? No, it doesn't. <laughs> right so so it doesn't edify you and if it does is that edification the godly edification that you need and then you have those people who will say well what if the music is in the middle what if it's not really a christian song and it's not really a circular song circular music but it's just like those those songs that are in the middle you know the one that don't talk about night just talk about life right right and i used to do that i used to say that a lot to myself to kind of like justify my actions dear believer hear me Every time you have to justify something, know that you're not supposed to do it. <laughs> and it's as simple as that. Every time as believers, we find ourselves justifying, we know we ain't supposed to be doing it. So, 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 so if you find a song uh, to be in the middle, right, what you really should ask yourself, and there's some things that you can look at to decide, you know, if, if, if you should listen to that music. You have to ask yourself, what is the purpose of the music, right? What is the style of the music? And what is the content of the lyrics, right? So, so what is the purpose? So we understand, like we said, like, like, you know, music can be made to use to glorify God. But at the same time, we read in the Bible how David also used music to bring comfort and to soothe the soul of Saul when he was tormented, right? So music can actually do something to your soul, right? And so one of the things you have to ask yourself, what is the purpose? Does the song literally lead me to my God-given purpose? Is it, is it helping me to glorify God? Is it helping me to thank the Lord? Is it helping me to set my mind on God or is it helping me to think about something that God doesn't want me to think about? That is something that you have to think about. And number two, what is the style of the music? The Bible don't really talk about a specific style or if, if, if Christian songs should be this way or over. No, no, no. It don't matter the style of the music. It don't matter the instruments that is being used. As long as it is you, it's being used to glorify God, you can go ahead and listen to it. And then the last one, which is the content of the lyrics, that is what you want to focus on. The words that are being spoken. So every song <laughs> is made of lyrics right most of the time and words are powerful lyrics are, are are words and and the bible tells us that life and death is in the power of the tongue so so the the words that people are speaking a lot of the people who who make some of these songs out here oftentimes are writing songs from a scary place they are writing it from a tormented soul or the hurtful place you want to look at all of that you know you want to follow the people who are making the song 
What kind of life do they live? The Bible said that you shall know them by their fruit. If their fruit don't match, why follow it? Don't follow it. Don't do it to yourself. You know, so look at the people you're listening to. How do they live? And if how they live is not something that you should be following as a believer, don't listen to their music. And it's so simple. It's so simple. But one thing I will tell you is that allow God to bring you to that place of growth. Allow him to literally bring you to that point of growth. But so Christians listen to circular music. You can. But is it beneficial to you? That is what you want to make sure that you're asking yourself and you're able to answer it. If the song do benefit you, go ahead. If it doesn't, please don't do it. It is not about do's and don't. It is not about, should I listen to this artist and then, and then that artist? And maybe I can listen to that artist, but not that artist. No, we are not picking and choosing artists. What we are doing, rather, is following the love of Christ. And if the love of Christ leads you there, then do it. If it doesn't, don't do it. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, I think I went through all of my notes that I wanted to share and... Yeah, I have a scripture for you in the book of Philippians chapter 4, verses 8. It says, And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. So that is another thing that you want to kind of look at. Think of things that are literally pure. The songs that you listen to should be pure and honorable to God and to yourself. So now the question of the week, how to overcome sexual sin? <laughs> Great question. Well, first thing you have to understand is that your body will not go to any place that your mind has not first been to. So if you are constantly thinking lustfully, chances are you're going to find yourself in a sexual sin. So first, find yourself uh, places that you can go to or people that you can hang around that will encourage you to help your mind stay on Christ, right? Meaning remove yourself from places that does not necessarily help you think of Christ or people that does not help you think of Christ. And then what you want to do is to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Get into the Word, so the Word of God. Soak yourself into the Word of God. Read it, meditate on it day and night. And as you do that, pray those scriptures. Now after you've gone through that, what you want to do is to maximize your time by using your time wisely. If you are sitting there doing nothing, chances are the enemy will utilize your time for you. So get busy for God and whatever it is that you can do for God with your hands, with your life today, pick it up, get yourself up and serve God. And I think that that is one of the best answers I could give you. Maybe I'll do a series or a video on how to overcome sexual sin. But that brings me here today for my video. I hope you guys, and I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Um, it's getting dark. I have to go home now, but I hope you all have been blessed by it. Um, let me know if Sir Christians be listening to circular music. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section. But um, remember that for Bridge the Gap, it is still our year of resurgence. Um, we're still walking in holiness and nothing in the fear of God. And lastly, don't forget to be blessed, be yourself, and be happy. Peace.